God, how are y'all? You good? Good, good. Thanks for asking. Uh, we're here again. It's a Sunday night, you all, and we're trying to figure out what's going on with uh, Demon Buster today. <clears throat> it's been a very interesting week, a very scandalous week, uh, and uh, a week that uh, for the Sir Walter Jones show, we added about 3,000 subscribers this, this, this week, the past two weeks, starting with um, the Carlton Pearson mess. Actually, started with Jake's. I don't know where y'all came from. I'm glad you're here, and I promise you that uh, we'll, we'll treat you right nice if you like Bible study and politics and, and all kind of other stuff that we do. We do a lot of stuff. We do a lot of stuff over here. Listen, um, uh, Gino Jennings, listen to me. <laughs> Brian Kahn, you Jackson, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida punks. Am I? We're going to talk about him today. Gino Jennings attempted to cast out a demon. All right. I saw portions of the demon casting out, just portions of it. And I stopped the video so I didn't see it all. But Alexander Pagani, the deliverance minister, as he referred to himself, he watched uh, Gino Jennings' casting out attempt. All right. I have not seen the Pagani um, reaction. I'm about to watch it for the first time with you all. It was sent to me a few times. I saw it on YouTube's thingy, and I said, let me see. And I hit it so that it could go into my history. So now I'm able to watch it. And I'm very interested in what he's got to say about it. Hail Mary, Mother Jesus, blessed be thou. <laughs> Season 60. <laughs> It's the show that will get you thinking And where the topics are hot Feel free to comment Whether we agree or not Cause he's got something to say Sir Walter Jones Sir Walter Jones Seven days a week, always on time, but this time is not free. So Walter Jones, always on sleep. Latest trending topics, had you jumping out your seat. He's got something to say. Come on in. The water's fine. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones Show. I'm here. It is the evening, the weekend edition. Baby, <laughs> uh, come on in. The water is fine. Water's fine. Uh, we used to do these pandemic reports on Sunday nights around nine o'clock. Well, we'll start a little early tonight. It's 8 30, 9 30 uh, Eastern Standard Time tonight. Let's talk about this demon busting stuff, okay? I've done a few shows on demon busting stuff. Remember last year, I did a show on TD Jakes casting out a demon. Remember this? Um, he was attempting. To cast out a demon. And he was talking to this woman. Like she was. Someone on the couch. And he was the counselor or the therapist. And he was talking nice and kind to the demon. And he didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and so he just didn't know what to do with it. Uh, well, it looks like the same thing happens with Gino Jennings. Let me tell y'all something about Gino before I play this Pagani video. Come close. I keep getting in trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Gino Jennings makes a lot 
of errors. He and his his the men on the Hallelujah, hallelujah. That brother. The both of them, when they read the text, they tend to read stuff in the text. Isogetically, it's really bad. They are rooted and grounded in modalism, sibelianism, apostolic. The women in the audience look like they are Muslim because they wear the hijab, looks like. He is a Pharisee. The best kind. This is why he constantly challenges a minister, a pastor, a teacher. He'll challenge them to debates. What man of God does that? Make a living always challenging somebody to a debate? A Pharisee. A man of pride. And he only wants you to come to his church to debate. You can't, he can't come to your church. It can't be in a place where it's a safe place. Meaning a place where it's unbiased, where his members are not there. See, he needs to be in his home spot because he have the home advantage like a football Every time the Bears went out to play, they lost. But when they came home in the snow and they played here at home, they tend to win because they had a home game, uh, what they call a home base advantage. That's what Gino, he looks at this as a competitive game. Who can win the most? And he need to hear his people. (laughs) He need to hear his people shout and scream and jump up and down. That's Gino. It's a joke. I wish he would stop doing that because he have he's he's got he's got that je ne sais quoi, what what's the what's the French term? He got it. He's charismatic. He he's able yeah, home field advantage. That's it in sports. He's 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 got something. He he, he has the ability to lull you. <laughs> In so that you can get the word of God, but unfortunately, they take the word of God and they twist it, and then they don't really use they. He likes to go into the apocrypha. He'll go to the apocrypha and try to explain the King James Bible and make you think that something is that that you think is there is not there. Onesimus, who's the one who said it. There. Uh, it was pinned by my my hand, and he says, "Paul didn't write Romans." Y'all, did y'all ever see the video where Gino says Paul did not write? Ro- Read it, chapter and verse. So he gave, and 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 it was a it was a sleight of hands. You see, Paul wrote Romans, but Paul words said for. The scribe to dictate it. Those are not Onesimus. What is his name, y'all? Those are not his words. Those are Paul's words. And if you're in court and the judge the judge is speaking, the court stenographer is typing. Years later, when you want to go and get the records, you're getting court records. And they'll, they're not going to ask who was the stenographer. They're going to ask who was the judge. The judge said these words. Do you understand? Uh, secretary, uh, dictate this letter for me. And he's talking, she's dictating. They s- send the letter out. Guess who the letter came from? So Gino likes to do that, thinking that we all are nescient <laughs> Yeah, but we're not. So he had um, an opportunity to cast out a devil. And around this so-called devil came up to the altar for him to cast out. All right. So I'm going to watch like you all. Some of y'all are going to watch for the first time and others of you. um may have seen it before, but I have not. 
Uh, Tertius, thank you, uh, Gray. I'm, I'm thinking of Onesimus for, for some reason. Yeah, Tertius, Tertius, Iconium. Yes, yeah, the scribe. I knew, I knew Archer was going to help me out because I kept saying Onesimus. All right. Okay. So uh, let's go here and see what we can do about this. Listen, Ebony, when I first saw, uh, um, what's his name? <laughs> Again, there's a lot of people watching, and sometimes I just can't get my words out. When I first saw Gino years ago, that is the first person I thought about. Soldier story. The officer. The well, what 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 where what is his command? Where is he in the in the pecking order? Yeah, right, right, right. He talked like that. That actor, brilliant actor. He's the first one I thought of. <laughs> first one. Okay, let's go. Let's see what uh, Pagan have to say. And I will not. I'll do my best. Adolf Caesar is that his name? Uh, Rich Richly. Um, that <laughs> you said that's not his real voice, <laughs> Sergeant. Sergeant, thank you, John Arrington. Sergeant. Um, I'm not going to. I'm gonna do my best not to judge Alexander Pagani. Meaning, I, I'm I'm gonna be nice because I don't really don't. I really don't like tearing down men. I really don't. But if he's an heir, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know. All right, here we go. Travis, hold on, hold on, man. Travis said, play the video, brother. Hold on, Travis, hold on. Right. Everlasting God, look down upon this brother. We ask you to give him deliverance from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind you and rebuke you. We command this spirit to come out of him <laughs> in the name of the Lord Jesus. Satan, I ask you to set this man free. Let this spirit come out of him. We bound you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, cast out everything and anything that is in him. That's contrary to your will. Satan, we bind you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of him. Okay, so the first thing let me say is this, that, and I'm not going to provide a criticism, but I am going to provide some <laughs> critique. <of> uh, <laughs> Ain't that what I just said? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we all want to call Alexander Pagande. He's my friend. He's my friend. He, he's... He ain't been on the show, but he, he has been in the comments section. So he's my friend. He's my friend. All right, so the first thing that I can honestly say that many pastors do in the beginning of when deliverance breaks out in an altar call is they start praying in third party. The, and already you're starting off wrong. Now, praying in third party is you start saying the Lord rebuke you. You start praying as if it's not you praying for the person and you start getting into more a place of intercession. I'm here to tell you that deliverance is not intercession. Now you could provide intercession while you're carrying out deliverance, but I'm here to tell you that false humility has gripped the church where we think that if we pray in first person singular using the word I, that somehow it is a sin. All right, I'm here to tell you. Oh, that's debatable right there. Oh wow, that's that's debatable. Uh yeah, that's him. Oh Mister, yes. In the eighty in, in the color purple eighty five. That's right. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Carolyn White. That was him. She's she's spitting his drink. He's saying something very controversial here. Uh, speaking the third party. Okay, let me, let me let me give him a chance. Give him a chance. That when it comes to confrontation of demonic powers, mm -hmm. the if you start off in praying in third party. Like Geno Jennings begun and begin to ask the devil to come out. He okay. actually said, Satan, I ask you to come out. Okay. There is no asking when you're doing deliverance with people. I agree. There is nothing more than commanding. Amen. All right. Now, I think what happens here is, is that uh, most pastors, specifically 
that don't do deliverance frequently, um, they don't have a platform in, or rather a, a strategy right. of foundational things to do. That's and a problem, Brother Pagani, because why is there a strategy or platform or a, a, a instruction book? That's basically what he's saying. There's no instruction, no manual on, on how to cast out a devil. They don't have them, but Pagani and his other brothers do. I think that's the problem right there. And immediately what I want to tell everyone is this. When the devil rears his ugly head, wherever that may be, you need to jump into first person singular, which means God has entrusted you with the authority of the name of Jesus and the word of God. And you're filled with the spirit of God and you and you have to confront the devil. You don't you don't uh, ask the devil. Right. All right. I agree. And I've heard many pastors default into this. Yeah. So if you notice immediately. He's true, true. And they default into that because sometimes they, they cross over who they're talking to because Christians often talk to God and Christ and Holy Spirit. They often will ask, 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 ask. And then they will cross their language over uh, sometimes when they're talking to the devil. So they, so they think so in prayer, we always asking and then they'll slip with the tongue, not realize what they're saying. Now I, I ask you de devil, cause it's difficult. It's like when that, that little boy went into that, that uh, church and, and killed those nine uh, parishioners in there and the, and the, and the preacher. And then he's in, he's now he's at, he's in court and the families of those who, who had their, their family members shot. They're in court, and one by one, they're getting on the mic. And the boy, Dylan Roof, whatever his name is, he was behind a a a, a window or something. And the and the people, the black people, were saying cultural church things. They they would be they would be like, you know, uh, you shouldn't have done this, and you you, but but but, um, you know, God bless you and stuff like that. I mean, they were saying. God bless you. Almost, all, almost like celebrating because with celebratory words in a sense, they were trying to be humble and meek, but they was also saying God bless you. And these are the things that we culturally do when we're talking in prayer and not realizing. So he, he, Pagani got something here. Started off in praying in third party. And then realized and jumped into first person singular. All right, so let's keep going. Come out of him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Satan, you's a liar. I command you by the power of Jesus himself. I command this spirit to come out of him. Lord Jesus, find him. Set him free. Everlasting God, deliver him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so here is what I want you to notice. If you noticed, he grabbed a bottle of oil. I'm here to tell you that that's just Pentecostal stuff that goes on. And most pastors that don't conduct deliverance frequently, the first thing that they do is they grab the oil, and most of the time they don't do nothing with it. So he had the oil in his hand. Okay. That's nothing more than Pentecostalism at its finest. Uh -huh. uh, most churches... On the altar, they have a bottle of oil in which they never use. So if you notice, he had the bottle of oil in his hand yeah. and didn't know what to do with it. That is nothing more than Pentecostalism um, of not being trained to understand how to appropriately use the anointing oil. And that's sad for it to be Jennings, who is arrogant, he's bold, he's prideful, He's always challenging you. You would think he would be, he would have so much power from on high that all he needs to do is to speak to this demon and the demon will flee. I mean, he wants to challenge us pre preachers and pastors. He wants to challenge us at his church and debate us so that he can win. And then next, but this demon walks in. I'm saying demon lightly <laughs> walks in and he has no power. That's a problem, Jennings. I'm here to tell you that whether you use the anointing oil or not, it doesn't matter. The confrontation is what matters, whether you use oil or not. Now, if you use oil and you know what you're doing, amen to that. But most of the time, most people that don't conduct deliverance, the first thing they do 
is that they grab the oil. Let me be the first to tell you that there's nothing magical about the oil, the anointing oil bottle. It's what it represents, but there's nothing magical about it. I agree. All right, so you can have a bottle of oil in your hand, and the devil's not afraid of it. It's yep. just oil. That's true. Did you, as a matter of fact, that you bought in a Christian book. I don't understand why I'm agreeing with Pagani so far, <laughs> and we're four, five minutes in. I'm agreeing with the brother. You do know that it's not real frankincense and myrrh. Did you catch what I just said? Yeah. So what happened was he didn't know what to do with it. So what did he do it? So if you look on the screen, he put the oil back. Most churches that don't do deliverance or just start out in deliverance, they go for the oil and then they put it on their hands and yeah. really don't know what to do with it. Yeah. That's just Pentecostal tradition that they haven't been explained. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But as you could see, he had to put it back. Why? Because he needed his hands free to be able to regulate the situation. All okay. right? All right. Lord God, set him free. Free him. Deliver him. Thank God in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of him. Come out. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm out of him. Thank God I command you to come out of him. That spirit that is in him, I command you to come out of him. Release him. Thank God in the name of the Lord. Let me stop this right here, right now. Demons are not that weak. We're going to go on the scripture. I'm going I'm to I'm go back to it, but we're going to go on the scripture and show you how demons almost ripped bodies apart because they were so strong. Notice how this young man is standing there with the ability to just scream a, a growl and he's not ripping folks apart. He's not, he's not being torn. He's not being thrown on the ground. He's not, he's not. Whenever we see that in the scripture, those demons are extremely powerful to the point where even in front of Jesus, one man fell almost, they thought he was dead because the, the devil had tormented his body so much. You understand? So this is a sign right here. This is a sign. And many of y'all in the comment section, I'm already seeing that y'all are smart. Say them you can't have them. We command you to take your hands off of them. Say them, I bind you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind you. Come out of him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, come out of him. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you. Come out of him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you believe God? Yes. Do you believe God? Yes. Then Satan can't stay here. As long as you believe God, Satan can't stay here. Okay, let me jump in. Even the devils believe God and tremble. Right. All right? So True. again, now let me just throw this out here. Gino Jennings has cast out <laughs> demons before um, with much success. We're critiquing this moment here. So I don't want anybody don't who, are, uh, who are Gino Jennings uh, supporters thinking that we're criticizing him as if he don't know what he's doing. We're critiquing this moment, all right? And I'm a deliverance minister, and I'm using it as a teaching moment uh, to help the body of Christ. Okay, right. so let's continue. So okay. I just wanted to throw that, throw that in there. So what we're seeing is, is that there's a back and forth between praying in third party and f praying in first person singular. But now, leading the person in a confession of faith um, in regards to do they, do they believe, uh -huh. um, I think it's more a church creed liturgical thing that's going on here yeah. rather than a revelation and an anointing of the Holy Spirit thing. Okay. All right? Because the devils believe and tremble. That's Let's keep right. going. I agree. I agree. Satan is a liar. Yes, he is. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Satan is a liar. I bound him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, Pagani, he said it. He said, Satan is a liar. I bound him. All right, so he did say that. Then he said, "In the name of Jesus." Now we do see in the scripture 
where I was at Jude, okay? That railing accusation and Satan, the Lord rebuke you, okay? And so in the name of Jesus. So I see what Pagani is saying earlier, but it looks like Jennings fixed it here by making it not third person anymore, exclusively. Liar. The devil is a liar. I command you to let him go. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of him. Hallelujah. Come out of him. Thank God in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm out of him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan can't have you. Don't let him have you. As long as you believe God, the devil can't have you. The devil cannot have you if you believe God. Satan, come out of him. Come out of him. Thank God, come out of him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, hold your peace and come out of him. Okay, let me interject. What would I have done at this moment? Every deliverance minister is built very different. At this point, I literally would have stopped the devil from tormenting this man in the moment of these outward displays of behavior. Anybody that follows our ministry know that at this point, I kind of have a zero tolerance for demonic manifestation at a point where it disrupts the service. So usually at this point, I'd be like, Satan, stop now in Jesus' mighty name. And there would be an immediate stop. Well, and then I would begin to call on the young man. Young man, what's your name? At this point, I would begin to say, who came with this man? And if nobody knows, I'd say, young man, I know you're in there. What is your name? And I would... Okay, I get it. We don't see that happening in the scriptures. So Pagani, like others, are making up ways of casting out demons. So don't worry, I'll go into the scriptures, y'all, and show you all the scriptures that I can find. All right, so I know you all are sending me scriptures here in the comment section. I have a lot of them. All right, we'll try to examine them. But what we need to examine is how Jesus dealt with demons because you won't find in the New Testament, I'm talking about the Acts of the Apostles and all through the New Testament on how the apostles specifically cast out demons. You don't see it. You see that they had the power to do it, but you don't see ritualistic and detailed things that how they cast out. No. So what's happening here is that Pagani and the rest of these deliverance ministers are coming up with ways of casting out a demon. They have created this system like the Pharisees created 39 more categories on the Sabbath day. Y'all better hear me. The reason why Jesus rebuked the Pharisees about how they were in the cornfield, Jesus and the disciples, and they were eating some corn because they were hungry, that they, and the Pharisees thought they were harvesting on the Sabbath day and rebuked them. But they were creating stuff. They created 39 more things than that wasn't even in the law. That's what these new pastors and preachers and, and deliverance ministers are doing. They created more things, more ways that's not even in the text. Because we see where Jesus directly speaks to the demon, asks him, what is your name? But do you see where Jesus is having a conversation with the boy or the man who was demon possessed at the time of his possession? Well, let's find out in the scripture. We'll get there in a minute. You impatient folks in the comment section. Tell the devil, I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the young man. Young man, what is your name? And if the devil doesn't allow him to talk, then I would bind the devil to allow him to talk. And when the young man would tell me his name, 100% of the time they tell me their name. I would say, young man, I'm speaking to you. And I would immediately go into, and I'll tell you in a few minutes what I will go into. But at this point, when I see that there is, that it's escalating, on my end, everybody's different. I go into calming this manifestation down because I know where this leads. It gets more boisterous, it gets more demonstrative, and then it gets louder and louder and louder and louder, and then next thing you know, it takes away from the service, all right? Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, hold your peace. In the 
name of the Lord Jesus. Hold your peace and come out of him. Hold your peace. Lord Jesus, set him free. Set him free now. Set him free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rogers, do me a favor. Will you send me that Lisa Ling uh, uh, own network uh, promotion again? Because it seems to me that the people in the comment section are are divided. <laughs> and they feel some of y'all are uh, defending um, Jennings. Some of y'all are defending Pagani. And some of y'all are saying this person do have a demon. Some of y'all are saying it's not a demon. And on and on. And I'm, I need y'all to know that this is ritualistic. Pagani is right when he does say, when he is alluding to ritualistic things in Christianity, all right, in Christendom, he, the Pentecostal way. He's right when he says that, even though I disagree with the aspect of deliverance ministers, I disagree with that whole, that whole look. Disagree with it. I don't care what you guys are saying in the comment section. But you all got pulled in to this to this thing. Okay. This is a Lisa Ling special. And I told y'all for homework to go there. <laughs> but y'all don't want to go there for homework. All right, I'm eleven minutes into that video. Let me go and find Lisa Ling. All right, right here. Walk me through the process of excising a demon from someone. We'll begin to have a conversation with the demonic spirit inside because the spirit can actually talk out of that person's mouth. Okay, y'all need to go there. This is Lisa Ling's special on OWN, Casting Out the Devil, Our America. These two girls keep going back every Friday to be delivered, and they do it week after week after month after month after year after year, never being fully delivered in their mindset. Why? We're seeing all this played out in the church. All this is being played out in the church. And so what does it do? It gives a job to men like Pagani. Who is that other uh, a Caucasian preacher who keeps getting in trouble? He's a, he's, a, he's a MAGA man who teamed up with and made this movie with Pagani, Delivering Devil you, you, something. What's the name of that movie? What's his name? Is it Lot, Lot, Greg? Is it Greg Lot or something like that? Lock? He's another one. And then there's another the young man who talks real fast who be with Greg Locke a lot. They all have their job. They have, thank you, Yellow Gator, El Salvador. Is it El Salvador or something Salvador? Oh, they're all part of that team. And it's because of people like you all, some of you all out there, who feel that you have this thing in you. But I'm going to tell y'all what this is. Isaiah, that's his name, right? Monkey Moves, Isaiah Salvador. Thank you, Travis. Yeah, y'all created jobs for these men. I would tell the devil, I'm not speaking to you. All right, let's, let's fast forward to 11 minutes. He's a liar. Come on. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on. Eternal God. Okay, let me interject here. This is where me and Gino, we, we would do the same thing. At this point, nine out of ten times, most deliverance ministers will start calling on the name of the Lord in a public display for that the Holy Spirit and that Jesus would begin to intervene, sometimes even asking God to send angels in the midst to be able to regulate the atmosphere and that God would begin to glorify himself. So at this part, this is where I go, okay, I would probably at this point do the same thing. Where I, why? Because what I'm doing is I'm redirecting the service back to focusing on Christ and on God. And at the same time, also asking God to help me in this moment, if I'm having a hard time helping this 
person get delivered or regulating or even discerning what's actually going on, uh, what's, uh, what's going on here. Let's keep going. Okay, I see what you're saying here, King Ray. When you say uh, when you lose spirits, then you have to lose spirits and you have to send them back to the pit of hell. Uh, no, they can't come out of hell in, and enter into. Uh, that's that's not how it works. Uh, whatever spirit or evil spirit that's in hell is chained in hell. You can't go down there and come back up. All right. So you can't send them to the pit of hell. Only God can do it and he will only do it uh, as uh, we get into uh the apocalypse in 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 revelation but right now they are free to roam they're seeking whomever they might devour do you understand deliver them now in the name of the lord jesus satan i command you to and i see you i see you damon richardson you got a point there he asked the question can satan cast out satan this is the whole reason why jesus said he the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost is what you all are doing. <laughs> but they was giving uh, uh, the, the devil credit for what Jesus was doing. So, again, you can't send them to hell. Come out of this man. Come out of him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, come out of him. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind you. Come out of him. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Call Jesus. Jesus. Come out of him. I don't fear you, Lucifer. Come out of him. Ah. Satan is a liar. Okay, he said, I don't fear you, Lucifer. So who's talking? Is the man talking? Well, obviously the man talking because like Damon said, Beelzebub would never say, I don't fear you, Beelzebub. I don't fear you, demon or devil, what have you. So this sounds like the man is saying, I don't fear you. So I'm curious. (laughs) That the man is finally really, uh, not finally, but he's, he's expressing himself. But this seems, this, this, this is a hint that this is not a demon. <laughs> he's a liar. Okay, let me interject. Did you hear what the young man said? Yes. He said, I don't fear you, Lucifer. Uh, oh, ding, 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 right here is where my discernment would kick in and begin to realize that maybe I'm not dealing with a fully demon-possessed person, but rather a person in a moment of soulish torment. Ah! (laughs) Oh my God, did y'all hear that? I think me and Pagani need to go on the road together. <laughs> I've never heard him. I don't watch him a whole lot. I've never heard him admit to that. <laughs> but wait a minute, Pagani. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got my hair. You got my hair standing up. Okay. So you and I are on the same on the same plane. This ain't no demon. But you call it a soulful something. Let me back that thing up. <laughs> Let me back this up. What you say it was? Man, realize that maybe I'm not dealing with a fully demon-possessed person, okay. but rather a person in a moment of soulish torment. Okay, okay, soulish torment. So you you getting are you getting ready to say that something spiritual is tormenting his soul? I'm curious. <laughs> man, listen to what I'm saying. Did you hear what the young man said? He said, I don't fear you, Lucifer. Okay, that's not a demon talking. That is the young man talking now. Right. So what should happen at this moment? Now this lets me know, the deliverance minister know, that I'm now dealing with the person and might not necessarily be dealing with a demon. Ah, (laughs) the truth and come out. The truth, all of you all who were saying that this this is, uh, that this is a demon your guy pagani says y'all ain't got no discernment the the deliverance minister is saying y'all don't even know what you're talking about (laughs) and you all who's saying that possibly this is a mental illness i think pagani is agreeing with you all you see how y'all are now 
I'm waiting for the ones because I'm reading all the comments. I see it in my peripherals in my face. I want to see how y'all going to spin it now. Hmm? Huh? How y'all in the comment going to spin this? The ones who y'all were saying, that's the demon and Pagani's right. But Pagani just proved you wrong just like Ice Cube proved that Cat Williams is a bald-faced liar. <laughs> when I did the Cat Williams show a couple of days ago, Man, the folks are going to get it mad at me, mad at me because Kat, they love Cat Williams. He wouldn't lie about it. And then, and then Ice Cube, the man who created the movie, says, "Uh, there's some insa. Uh, there's some. Let me clarify something here. He didn't want to call him a lie. He said, "Let me clarify something here. We will have never done a rape scene." And I showed it to y'all after Cat Williams says he's the one that told them not to do a rape scene. And Ice was like, "It's already in the. It's already in the script, bro." Then y'all was like, yeah, but Cat wasn't lying. He just told a half truth. <laughs> he not lying. He just forgot. He just forgot to tell all the truth. You know, you black people, y'all get on my nerve. I'm dealing, watch this, with a person trying to get themselves free. Uh-huh. Through means of works and okay. not by grace and belief okay. and repentance. Okay. Did you catch what I just said? I caught it. I might even be dealing with someone <laughs> at this moment, maybe <laughs> potentially dealing with some mild mental illness oh! going on here. Why? Oh! Why? Oh! Because the young oh! man is... Did you catch what I just said? <laughs> I caught it. I might even be dealing with someone at this moment, yes, sir. maybe potentially dealing with some mild mental illness going <laughs> Pagani, 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 Pagani. <laughs> My man. <laughs> My million. Yes. Did y'all hear him? <laughs> I, I, his, his stock is rising in the Sir Walter Jones uh, vault <laughs> of Lord Stocks. <laughs> Did y'all hear Pagani? He just made a fool out of y'all. <laughs> I hope he stick. I hope he stay right here, brother Pagani. Listen, <clears throat> what's that mean with that little boy doing this? <laughs> A little boy doing this. Please, please. <laughs> so I need to find that meme. Listen, this is this is my show. I can take my time. Let me find that meme. Let me find. Hold on. Uh, fingers crossed. I want to find that little boy. <laughs> I want to find that little boy. Where where he at? Oh man, I, oh he not on here. He not on here. I'm gonna find that little boy. Send it to me. Who, whoever can send it to me. All right, let's go back. Going on here. Why? Why? Because the young man is now helping in the process. And this is what we tell people to do. And every deliverance minister, if you're watching me, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where people get extra trying to help you in the process. Yep. And we have to tell them, listen, calm down. All we need you to do is repent, believe. Yes. Don't add all this ah, yes. extra stuff. And sometimes Come on, because people have been taught. That they believe that that's what they have to do. Preach, man. Then they get extra with it. So now it's not actually a demon manifesting. Preach, man. This is what I'm saying. It's now a tormented soul uh -huh. doing what they feel that they have to do uh -huh. to get free. Oh, 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 no, man. <laughs> Pagani, Pagani, Pagani. <laughs> Give me a P. <laughs> Give me a A. <laughs> Give me a G. Wow. I never thought. <laughs> Brittick said, oh, wow. <laughs> he figured it out. <laughs> Man, this is all right. See, this is why these reaction shows, it, it, it helps. Because you don't know what's getting ready to come. But all oh, when it comes, it's great. <laughs> uh, are y'all's ears hurting i'm sorry the horn the, the dj horn is going off okay right here let's continue please wait hold on please pagani please please stay in this vein please i beg of thee please alexander graham bell please stay here listen to what i'm saying now you might be saying are they faking it absolutely not are there is this a demon at this moment? Potentially no. Is okay. this a 
person being tormented uh -huh. maybe with okay. soulish issues okay. and their own wrong theology of what they feel that they okay. have to do to help the process. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. And Let's what, keep going. And what is soulless issues, though? I need you to expound on that. What does that mean? Because I know that he probably believes in soul tie. So there, there's a connection to the soul, which makes these things happen because of the soul. He does fairly say something about mental illness, but he keeps directing it to the soul. So this am ambiguity here that I'm, I'm hoping he might explain, but I'm not going to wait an hour and 14 minutes for it, you know, because that's how long this is. I'm not going to do that. Come out of him. Hallelujah to God. Come out of him. Come out of him. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of him. Satan, you can't stay there. Satan, you can't stay there. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus Christ. We command you. We order you. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Okay, let me interject. Here is where in our house we do things a little bit different. Look on the screen. You see the young man's under his jacket where, where now you can begin to see um, his upper uh, body part at this moment and even before we would have covered that up already. We would have covered that up already either with the prayer blanket and I'm going to get a little bit further into this as we go along. Where are the intercessors and where are the ushers? surrounding the young man to make sure that his dignity is protected. Now, I'm not saying that they don't have this in this church. Please don't think that I'm anti-Geno Jennings. We are providing a teaching moment. We've all made mistakes like this, and right. you can go through some of my videos and critique my videos that I've done deliverance on. Uh -huh. But right here, right here, this part of his body that is being shown should have already been covered up by the intercessor or security or the ushers, deliverance ushers and ministers that are trained in this. But let's keep going. Let's okay. keep going. Okay, okay, I, I see that. You. I agree right with that. Now. Take your hands off of him. Take your hands off of him. Take your hands off of him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Take your hands off of him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Take your hands off of him. Take your hands off of him. Take your hands off of him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Take your hands off of him. Take your hands off of him. He's a liar. He's a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can't have him. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. You can't have him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You can't have him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, stop right there. Sorry, I got to get Bronx right now. We don't tolerate this in our house. Yeah, you tan up the Breaking house. Breaking up the altar, <laughs> messing up our microphones. Yeah. You be shocked. I usually shut that down in a heartbeat. I don't <laughs> tolerate that. That stuff calls our church money. Yep. You not going to come in our church, and I have tan no problem saying this. You can look at our videos. At this point, I shut the devil down from breaking church property. Yep. I don't tolerate that. Oh, but they're under a demon. Oh, no. We don't tolerate that. Breaking microphones, breaking church altar plants. We don't, <laughs> uh -uh. We don't allow that in our house. We <laughs> shut that down. I shut that down in a heartbeat. That at that moment is when I get Bronx. And I'm sorry, y'all. That's when I literally say, hey, 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 we don't do that here. 
Don't be messing up our church here, <laughs> Satan, or the young man or whoever. I don't tolerate that because if you allow it, they break up everything in the, the altar. Tap, I'm here to tell every Christian, every church pastor, you don't have to let the devil break your pulpit, break your church plants, break your church lighters, th take the microphone, throw it across the room, take your Bible. You don't have to allow that. If that happens, it's because you allow it. We don't allow that Damn. in our house. And that part. I'm just going to tell you is where we get Bronx. We don't tolerate that <laughs> at Amazing Church in New York City. I'd shut that down in a heartbeat. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. Oh, Jesus. Lord 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 Jesus. Devil have to go. Oh, did you hear what he just said? Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. There we go again. That's a hint. No demon. Yeah. Just a tormented soul yeah. at that moment. Now, I'm not saying there's not a demon there. We're going to get right. to the demon part. Mm -hmm. But did you hear what the young man said? I heard him. He said, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Yeah. That would have been my cue to present the gospel. And here is where my wife argues with me a lot because she says, why don't you put that in your deliverance videos? In every, as a matter of fact, yesterday, we led 20 people to repent of their sins at our New Year's Eve celebration in our church. She says, why don't you put that in the deliverance videos that you release? You just put the demon part when they get set free. Put the gospel part. At that moment with the young man saying, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin, I would have kicked it from apostle to pastor. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I think I've had enough of that. Okay. I think y'all did too. Come close. Let's go to the scriptures, shall we? One of the problems that I'm seeing in all of this is none of this should have been recorded. Listen to my opening about Geno Jennings. His arrogance was so that the next day or whenever he was filming, because I saw the original film from Tony, whatever the man's name is. That's his guy, that, that guy who puts up all of the Gino. Gino said, all right, run this video, Tony Harvins, or whatever his name is. He was egging. Oh, he was bragging that he had did something successful. So when we finally go and hit the video to see what he talking about, I saw the first couple of minutes of him trying to catch the demon out. And I was like, oh, his arrogance is so high that he wants y'all to see T Tony Harvin. Is that his name? Bless him. He wants y'all to see that he successfully cast a demon out. But I fast forwarded his original because I didn't watch all of it because it was just long. Like the Walter Jones show, just long. <laughs> so I fast forwarded all the way towards the end and saw maybe a minute or two at the end, and he couldn't cast the demon out the man. He just said, y'all take him to a seat. And then Gina went into the audience and then sat with a woman who looked like she was possessed, and he worked with her. I said, ain't this about nothing. What's going on here is this, and I'll say it one more time for the people in the back row. The demon is too powerful, too strong to sit there and let that man stand calm and go, ah, and then maybe throw some flower pots and maybe mess up the microphone and allow Gino to hold him like this. I'm sorry to tell you, when we see demons act a fool, the sons of Sceva will never attempt that again. They beat the hell out of those boys and ripped their clothes. They left there bleeding. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who, who are you, Gino Jennings? <laughs> if that was a demon, he would have tore that church up. He would have tore it up. So y'all need to miss me with that. That that young man had a mental illness, and Pagani, thank God, he discovered it. So let's go to the text, shall we? 
because this doesn't make any sense what's coming out of these church houses. Let's go to uh, Google and let's see where I want to go. Uh, Jesus cast out demons. Let's go to Google. Let's pull up some scripture and see if we can find some stuff that might be related to Jesus casting out demons. All right. Matthew chapter 8 and Mark 5. Uh, this What is this? I can't write on this, but let's see what's going on. The Gadarenes. Yes. Two, two, two demon possessed men. Notice one account have, have one man. The other account have two. It's always two. It's just that one gospel decide to focus on the one and behold cried out what have you to do with us notice here the demon recognized what have you to do with us O son of god jesus didn't have to say nothing the demon recognized jesus here mm, mm, mm. ain't that about nothing have you come here to torment us before uh the time now a, uh, uh, now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance and the demons be begged them, if you cast us out, send us away into the pigs. And he said to them, go. All right, that's Matthew's account. Let's see what Mark's account is. He lived among the tombs. They, Matthew, just, Mark decided to use one guy. Uh, let's see, night and day. And when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and fell down before him and crying out loud voice, what have you to do with me? Look at that. Why is it that the demons recognize Jesus, but they don't recognize you? Hmm. I adjure you, do not torment me. And Jesus asked what? What is your name? He didn't ask the man. He asked the demons, the imposter, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now we've got an identification here. And then they begged to do the same thing. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirit came out and entered the pigs and on and on. All right, Luke, what he saying? Uh, Jesus, when Jesus had stepped out of the land, there met him a man from the city. All right, Luke is talking about one man as well. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and felt, okay, what have you to do with me? All right, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. He had commanded him, come out, for many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon. This man was strong and breaking bonds. Come on, y'all. That, that ain't happening today. I don't see that happening in America today. I'm sorry. Jesus didn't ask, what is your name? I didn't see that happening today, y'all, in this video. I didn't see it happen. Anybody see it happen? I didn't see it happen. Okay. All right. How do we, how do we get back to... Where we were. Okay. So let's go to another one, shall we? That's Jesus cast out demons. Let's find another one. Uh-oh. Uh, the disciples cast out demons. No, no, let's go to a demon that was in the synagogue. Let's find some, some scriptures for that. All right. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Jesus heals a man. And they went into uh, Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue. What? And was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority. That's important. And not as the scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus? Why are these demons recognizing the exorcist? <laughs> huh? And they don't recognize you. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. Look at that. 
But Jesus rebuked him saying, shut up. So you got a choice. You can either ask the demon, who are you? Or you can tell the demon to shut up. Maybe here Jesus knew who the demon was. So he told him, be quiet and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed. So they questioned among themselves. That's Mark. What did Luke says? And when the demon had him thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him having done him no harm. So the demon does what he do. And they were amazed. Mm, 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 mm. There's something else. There's something else. Okay. Let's see about the, the disciples, the disciples casting out demons. Let's find something in here. Let's see if we can find something here. And uh, he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles so that they might be with him and might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. Now, check this out, you all. This is Mark chapter 3. I'm getting ready to set you up. Mark chapter 3, the disciples who became the apostles cast out demons successfully. Do we know how they did it? No. All we know is that they did it. All right? That's Mark 3. Remember, I said Mark 3. Okay. Mark 6. And he called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey. All right. And if they, all right. So he gave them the authority here. All right. Matthew 10. And he called to him 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out. Okay. Matthew uh, 10, 5. All right. Same stuff. Same stuff. They had the power. Power and authority over demons, Luke 9. Okay, they all saying the same thing. But there's a problem. Because there was one time when they couldn't do it. Y'all already knew I was setting you up. But when was it? that they couldn't do it after they could mark chapter three when we get to mark chapter nine they couldn't when they returned to the other disciples they saw a large crowd surrounding them and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them when the crowd saw jesus they were overwhelmed with awe and they ran to greet him what is this arguing about one of the men in the crowd spoke and said teacher i brought my son so you could heal him he is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk and whenever his spirit seizes him it throws him violently to the ground we didn't see that in the general video then he foams at the mouth grinds his teeth and be becomes rigid so i asked your disciples mm, mm, mm. i asked your disciples to cast and they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people. Now pay close attention to the lyrics here. <clears throat> Listen to the lyrics. You faithless people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus. It threw the child into what? A violent convulsion. We didn't see that. And he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. That long? The spirit often throws him into, fi into the fire, into the water, trying to kill him. We didn't see that today. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean? 
if I can. <laughs> Jesus was bad. He's bad. Jesus said, anything is possible if a person what? Believe. Believe. What? Faithless people. Faithless believe. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help my what? Help me overcome my unbelief. Help thine mind unbelief, King James may say. Uh-oh, right here. But wait a minute. Jesus gave the disciples in Mark 3 the ability to cast out demons, and they did it. We got a belief situation here. When Jesus saw that the crowd of, on, on, uh, of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out of this child and never, never enter into him again. That sounds like a comment I saw earlier. Here it is. Why don't more people stay delivered? Y'all see what James D. Foster doctor said? Huh? Many of these people keep coming back up to the altar for deliverance. But Jesus said, never enter into him again. Mm. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared, what? To be dead. That's how violent this, that demon was. Hmm? A murmur ran through the crowd and people said, he dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet and he stood up. Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, psst, psst, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? <laughs> Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. Notice what's missing here. Fasting is missing. Why? Because it has a lot to do with Man, you scripts. I know that's large. You can't see it. <laughs> Manuscripts. Many translations don't put fasting there. It puts prayer there. This is why I got y'all going to, to Moody Bible Institute with me <laughs> in Patreon. So that y'all can see when you see some of these, you think it's an error. But they're not really errors. <laughs> Bro, James McCoy, man, I love you. I was reading this article here. It was talking about this kind comes out by fasting and praying. I like what he says here. Uh, he talks about unbelief. These verses are Jesus' explanation and solution to, to his uh, disciples following their failure to bring healing. Though they were willing, they were unable to help him. The father brought his son. All right, we read all of that. Uh, unbelief is not believing that something can't be done. The disciples believed in the power of God to heal because they tried to heal the boy, uh, become healed. Help, I'm sorry, help. <laughs> unbelief is more than not believing. Unbelief is lacking sufficient spiritual ability. Simon the sorcerer saw the disciples or the apostles do the work, healing the sick and people coming to the Lord. And the Bible says he believed. Simon the sorcerer. The Bible says he believed. But as they continued to do their work, then Simon then had a question. He asked them, I will pay you. If you would give me the ability to do these things. And they rebuked Simon. And then Simon was like, go to the Lord for me. Please pray for, pray for me. Please don't let me be destroyed. Just because you see something that says believe. Notice the father says, I believe, but help thine my what? Ah. 
Let me let me further let me further let me further it. Uh, he says unbelief is lacking sufficient spiritual ability to get something done. Jesus expected that they should have been able to bring God's healing to the boy. He went on to explain how faith works by saying, if you have faith as a mustard seed, he did not talk about faith the size of a mustard seed. He talked about faith as. That's something I, I, I'm going to have to take this to Patreon because this is something that I can dig deep into. Look at what he says here. Faith in God is something that must grow and develop like a muscle. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 3, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith, what grows exceedingly. Just because you got saved don't mean you need to be going back out there to the bars and to the strip joints and to the crack house and try to save everybody in there. You going to be the sons of Skeva. <laughs> your faith must grow. And it strengthens you. And the love of every one of you all abound towards each other. Muscles grow and develop from exercise and good nutrition. Your faith in God grows the same way. Mm, mm, mm. The disciples' inability to help the boy was an issue of their need to grow and develop. A mustard seed starts small but grows to become a tree this is why jesus used it when jesus says this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting he did not refer to this kind of demon had nothing to do with the demon you all interpreted that every time somebody used that mark chapter 9 scripture this kind comes out by fasting and praying he wasn't talking about that kind. He wasn't talking about the demon. He talking about you. <laughs> he referring to this kind of faith, which is a growing faith that comes from a growing relationship with God. Is this making any sense to y'all now? You understand? So it doesn't matter about the demon, how strong it is. Jesus already gave the disciples the ability to cast out demons, but they were lacking something. Come on, Jerome. Come on, sir. So let's go into this. Why did Jesus say that demon could only come out by fasting and praying? This happened after the Mount of Transfiguration. The disciples privately asked Jesus why they could not cast out the demon. And Jesus replied that this particular kind could only come out by prayer and fasting. While the King James Version records Jesus as saying that the demon in Mark 9 can only come out by fasting and praying. Other translations, the ASV, the NASB, the ESV, the NIV, and several of them leave out the word fasting and only put their prayer. The difference is due to some translations use of older and less numerous copies of manuscripts. The King James translates from some of the more recent and more numerous copies, Textus Receptus. But sometimes the manuscripts will have uh, slight differences, often referred to as textual variants. So Mark 9 is an example of a passage with a variant like COVID-19 have many variants to it. So while there are many variants in Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, it is remarkable that none of the variants create any significant doctrinal challenges, though. They are usually minor and don't impact the message of a passage at all. But Mark 9 is one of the more significant variants as the different 
translations make it unclear whether the demon in Mark 9 could only come out by prayer and fasting or whether prayer alone would work based off of the manuscripts. It is worth noting that in the New Testament, fasting, watch this, because you can't go by the law of first mention. We did a show on the law of first mention. Well, we did a private Zoom session on that. It is worth noting that in the New Testament, fasting was simply prayer. So focused and intense that a person did not give attention to things like eating or drinking. So either way, Jesus is emphasizing that the demon in Mark 9 can only come out by intensive prayer. Because when a person focuses so much on prayer, they typically don't eat. So the manuscripts kind of, as Jesus explains to the crowd, the key was the faith of those involved. That's the key. So it is evident that prayer rooted in faith in Jesus Christ is effective. It's, a, it's effective. You got to see James' assertion that the prayer of the righteous or the believing person is effective. The prayers of the righteous avail much. James 5, 16. Jesus was challenging the crowd, the boy's father, and the disciples on the importance of believing in him as the one who could accomplish what would otherwise be impossible. Now, let's talk about these y'all and this exorcism stuff, exorcism and casting out demons. We see it happening with Jesus. We see it happening with the, with the disciples and the Pharisees. It appears that the purpose of Jesus disciples performing exorcisms was to show Christ's dominion over the demons and to uh, uh, verify that the demons were acting in his name and by his authority. It also revealed their faith or their lack of faith. You get it? So it was obvious that this act of casting out demons was important to the ministry of the disciples. How so never? It is unclear what part casting out demons actually played in the discipleship process. There seems to be a shift in the latter part of the New Testament regarding demon warfare or demonic warfare. The teaching portions of the New Testament, Romans through Jude, Romans through Jude, refer to demonic activity, yet do not discuss the actions of casting them out. How do we do it? Nor are believers exhorted even to do so. We don't see where it tells us to keep doing it. We are told to put on the armor to stand against the wiles and the tricks of the devil. But we don't see what Paul says. Now, go and cast out these demons. He don't tell us. Then he tells us to resist the devil and he will flee. He doesn't tell us to cast them out or how to even do it. We are told to resist the devil. James 4, 7. Be careful of him. 1 Peter 5 and 8, and not give him room in our lives, Ephesians 4, 27. We are not told how to cast him out or that we should even do it. <laughs> I know y'all like, well, what, 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 then what do we do with the demons? <laughs> well, my question to you is, is that a demon? Is the demons, is that has that much activity in people. Notice, if demons had that much activity, you would think that there'd be that much peace in your church, in your home, on your job, if the demons were acting the way Paganian and, and Greg Locke and, and El Salvador, Isaiah, and all those guys, the way they act, that demons like everywhere, even in the believer, you think, this is a we're living really peaceful compared to what how the demons were acting during Jesus' time and the apostles' time. That means they were ripping bodies and tearing them up. But now we don't even see that in America today. We don't see it. You want to see it. And you think that you're seeing that. But the devil is smarter than you think he is. 
First of all, he don't even want you to believe that he even exists. This is why we, we got rid of hell. We got rid of the demon. Carlton Pearson got a great platform to do that and bewitched, bothered, and bewildered you all. The devil is smarter than yet, y'all. Smarter. Smarter! The book of Ephesians gives clear instructions on how we are to have victory in our lives in the battle against the forces of evil. The first steps are placing our faith in Christ. That's the first step, which breaks the rule of the prince of the power of the air. Second step, we are then to choose again by, choose that is, again by God's grace, to put off ungodly habits. Notice Pagani picked it up. When the man started to speak, he said that his soul was being tormented because of some sin that he created. To put off ungodly habits and to put on godly habits. This does not involve casting out demons, but rather reviewing or renewing our minds. Renewing our minds. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It's your reasonable service. After several practical instructions on how to obey God as his children, we are reminded that there is a spiritual battle. It is fought with certain armor that allows us to stand against, not cast out, the trickery of the demonic world. We stand with truth. We stand with righteousness, the gospel. We stand. We stand in faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer. All these things can fix the problems that we have created. It appears that as the word of God was completed, the Christians had more weapons with which to battle the spirit world than the early Christians did. <laughs> the role of casting out demons was replaced for the most part with evangelism and discipleship through the word of God. It's been canonized, closed. We're good. Since the method of spiritual warfare in the New Testament do not involve casting out demons, it is difficult to determine instructions on how to do so. So, if necessary at all, it seems that it is through exposing the individual to the truth of the word of God and the name of Jesus Christ. This is what Pagani picked up on. I do not agree with that whole ministering, delivering thingy. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. But what I will say to you all who are going after me, calling me a false teacher. Show me the scripture where we are told to cast out demons today. And if you go to Mark chapter 16, we got another problem with you not understanding what has been added in the text. And many of the translations don't even add the last part of Mark. When Jesus gave a commission, got rid of a lot of that stuff, because if that's the case, then many serpents have bit men and they died. Why aren't y'all? You have uh, was told to drink uh, this poison and it would not harm you. But the saints was drinking poison and they died. COVID came and into their bodies and they died. You all are not doing this stuff, raising the dead. Well, what happened to the raising of the dead? Every time we see somebody trying to raise a dead, we see some stupid African man look, making these, 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 um, these sheeple stand around a, 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 a casket and a man that they didn't paid for, and they open up the casket, and you can see the man breathing, and he's all right, get up, get up, and the man get up, and he acting, he, all his, his horrible acting. That's the only time we see where somebody's been raised from the dead. It's always got to be some kind of public spectacle. And y'all keep falling for it, spelling you silly women. Keep falling for that mess. And men know you're silly. That's why we keep doing these things over and over again so that y'all can just fall in love with the mind of God. So you have yet to show me scripture where the New Testament church, we, who got the canonized text, was told to go out there and cast out demons. Huh? That's all y'all do? The demons is not that weak. He ain't that weak. God got a chain on them, that boy. God's got a leash on the devil. Jesus said, I see Satan fall from heaven like lightning. It's getting ready to happen in the book of Revelation. You think demons are on the earth right now? And they are. You think the devil's on the earth right now? He's a 
prince of the power of the air. He's the god of the world. He, he's the Abaddon. He, he got all those names. You think, yeah, he here, all right. But God got a dog leash on him. And if Satan was loosed right now, none of you would survive. When we get to the book of Revelation, billions of people are going to die. Because Satan will be unleashed. Do you understand? But he's Dino. He he's biting. He's throwing darts at you. All kind of stuff. But God got a leash on that boy. And if he and his imps was loose like y'all think y'all seen in these churches, why is it that the demon only act a fool at your temple? At your tabernacle, at your church of God, at your full gospel, at your Pentecostal, apostolic church of God in Christ church. Why is it that demons only magnify and manifest themselves at church, never at the grocery store, never on your job, never while you're taking a, a bike walk ride that is, never at L.A. Fitness, but it only happens at your church. There's a problem. This is why these prophets come to town and, and rob y'all. These deliverance ministers come to your town and rob y'all. They only go inside your church. But those healers and miracle workers never go to the hospitals. You never see them going to the graveyard. Never. They never go into the marketplace. Never. They only go to your church because it's a circus. So you always talk about, I seen a demon. This devil was manifesting itself. And it is always at your church, ain't it? The devil feels so comfortable at your church. I ain't going to your church. I ain't going. I ain't going. I ain't going. This is why people are not going to church anymore. They, 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 they're like, I'm so sick of the church because it's a circus. Because they only see that kind of crap at church, but they don't see it nowhere else. And you don't understand that you're doing a danger when a mentally ill man or woman come in your church and you throw oil on them and you, you shake them, you throw them on the ground and you do all kinds of stuff. Come out, come out. And all this stuff you think is manifesting. That person is ill, probably had not taken this medicine or maybe has not even been diagnosed, don't even have medicine. And so the, the government's going to come down on you, you pastors. They're going to come down. On you. Mark my words, they're coming down on you all. And you're putting harm on these people who are coming into your church who are mentally ill. It's okay to pray for them. But you need to pray for discernment because y'all are misdiagnosing these people by saying they have a demon. And then you send them back out. They done calm down. They calm down. All right. And you think, oh, he's good. And then he go back out there and then he, his mental illness just acts up. Just act a fool. He comes back. Y'all got him at the altar again. Come out, demon. Come out, demon. That man or woman is making a fool out of y'all. It's making a fool out of y'all. And you can't even see it. You silly women need to sit your butt down. Get your behind in the word of God. Get on your knees and ask God, help me see the shysters that are in these churches. Help me to see these wolves and these thieves. Help me, help me, help me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not smarter than the average bear. I'm just not. He's handsome. He's tall. Dark and handsome. He wears a nice suit. And he uses big, beautiful, encyclopedia words. And he sure can sing. Oh, don't let the man sing. And y'all keep getting pulled by this mess. And then you think, oh, he's right. I see it too. There's nothing under my sleeve. Of course you see it. It's just an illusion. Jesus, as powerful as he was on the earth, he could not do many miracles in that town. Can y'all tell me in the comment section why? He couldn't do. Wait a minute. Y'all who never read the Bible would think that I'm a false teacher by saying Jesus couldn't do many miracles. He couldn't. He read their minds and they was like, a uh, 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 physician, heal thyself. And he couldn't do but one or two miracles in that town. Why? Pamela got it.
because of their dis or unbelief. They didn't believe. So the reason why you're not seeing a whole bunch of miracles in the United States of America is because you don't believe. You too can't cast out a demon. Somebody in the conversation asked me, so El Jones, when have you casted out a demon? I don't cast out demons. I preach the word of God and the demons don't feel comfortable being around me. Because the demon tried to get Jesus when he was at his weakest state. He hadn't eaten. He had fasted for all those weeks. And then right away, Satan shows up. And what did Jesus do? Went right to the word of God. That's what I do. I know where, when Satan shows up, the weapons of our warfare ain't carnal, y'all. I know when the, the devil shows up and I go right into the word of God. And then the devil then uses the word of God against me. That's what he did to, to Christ. The devil went right into the word and said, yeah, I know what it said, but his, but did not the word of God says, if you can do this, do that. The devil know the word. He was there at the beginning too. He was created. So he was there a long time before you came on the scenes. Understand? So the devil is uncomfortable around me. He's uncomfortable in my house. He's uncomfortable around my children. He's uncomfortable. That's how I cast out, so-called cast out a demon. Y'all are looking for a manifestation because you keep, you keep, you watching too much Netflix, too much Hulu. Uh, you've, 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 you've seen the exorcism and the 1974 version. You've seen the, the, the exorcism of, of, of Emily Poster. All right. Y'all, y'all watching too many of these shows and you've been desensitized and you just think that this stuff is, is manifesting itself the way it is. And you don't even see it. You want to see it. But you don't even see it in America. So your lack of belief, like the disciples, didn't have enough belief to cast out this demon. Why? This thing comes out by fasting and prayer. So when you look at this, King James uh, mentions lunatic spirit. There's, 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 there's only a certain amount of spirits that's in the Bible. OK, I did a show on that. I talked about how there's only certain spirits that in the Bible, but we are calling it spirits. Everything doesn't have a spirit. Let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm going to have to go to Patreon, you all, because this is going too, too long. I'm going to have to go to Patreon and, and do that. <clears throat> because I did a show on different types of spirits and um, I'll have to do that. All right. Are y'all upset with me? No. Mm. Y'all mad at me, ain't you? I cannot apologize for what I said. Because I was in the word of God, I can't apologize. I can't, I can't. Yeah, that's good. The devil has learned to work on the mind. Yeah. He he has found ways. Uh, no, it's not the Iyana Van Zandt effect. I try the spirit. I don't know if I I don't know if I did that with the Iyana Iyana Van Zandt. I, I might have. I'm gonna have to watch that. I'm going to have to watch that. You all can watch that too. Let's go there. For those of you who are interested, um, three months ago. I did that three months ago? Yeah. I don't think I did that only. But this video here called Try the Spirit, the Iyanla Van Zandt Effect. Uh, you can't see it. Yeah, it's not that great. This, okay. Try the Spirit, the Iyanla. 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 Yeah. Van Zent effect. Go to Sir Walter Jones show. It's there. I talked about the different types of spirits. Okay. So I'll have to update that on Patreon. All right. Y'all can go over there. Tomorrow I'm talking about, what am I talking about tomorrow on Patreon? Each day I'm going to do, uh, I'm, oh, tomorrow I'm talking about the moral law. Tuesday I think I'm going to talk about the ceremonial law. And then Wednesday I'm talking about the judicial and the civil, civil law. It's in the upper room, by the way. You can go there and sign up for the upper room. And uh, we're going to get deep, right? Moody, my uh, class starts Tuesday at Moody Bible Institute. And so as I read, 
I go to Patreon and I uh, I kind of show y'all what I'm learning with the hopes that you will go through these five years with me. <laughs> five long years. <laughs> I plan to do it in a much shorter time because I'm going to summer school as well. All right. All right. Destiny Community Church blessings to you. I need that. So listen, y'all. You can keep chasing demons all you want to. Do me a favor. Don't come around me with that mess. You understand? Don't come around me. You can bind the devil in Jesus' name. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. I have used those words a many a day. Get away from me. I talk to him like he's a thug. Fool, I see you. Get away from me. And I resist him. Then I go to the word of God. He don't hang around that much. He has to leave. Satan re returns. Notice the Bible says that Satan left him for a season. But don't worry. Satan came back. You best believe. <laughs> he always comes back. Because he's, he's persistent. And he's consistent. Right? He comes back. And when he comes back, he, temp he typically limp away. He, he walks over, but he, he limps back. <laughs> you understand? Come on, Minister Valentine. Bible basics. It's Bible basics. So miss me with all that demon busting and stuff. All right? I respect Alexander Pagani. I don't know him that great. But what he was saying in the, in the Gino, uh, Jennings video, he was spot on. I agree with 85% of the stuff he was saying. He's spot on, spot on. Even though I'm not a part of it, I don't agree with that whole deliverance minister, minister stuff. I don't agree with none of it. But he was spot on. I can give it to him. He know how I think. He's, been, he's watched my shows before because he's been in the comments section. So I, Alexander Pagani, he knows. And, then when, and if he don't like you, he will, he will block you. Ask me how I know. Ask, ask Corey Miner from the <laughs> Smart Christian channel. If Pagani blocks people, <laughs> yes, he does. So I may be blocked. He may not even see me, but he's, he's been, he's been on the show. <laughs> All right. But he'll block you in a, in a minute, millisecond. Cause out of his mouth, he said he don't like that distraction. So he blocked certain YouTube channels. <laughs> That's what he said. I heard it with my own two feet. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here it is. You are a blessing. I found it. I found it. Here it is. It's called Can You Have a Oh my God. <laughs> I remember that show. <laughs> oh my God. Wait. Wait. <laughs> oh my God. The name of the show is <laughs> <laughs> oh man hold on hold on the name of the show is can you have a b-i-t-c-h spirit i can explain i can explain but go to facebook i don't know if this is on youtube or not can you have a b-i-t-c-h spirit y'all like why would you call name a show that well i didn't name i <laughs> There was a brother who pr who was up preaching. <laughs> there was a brother who <laughs> There was a brother who was up preaching and he was trying to make an example. And he said, "Come here, sister, let me talk to you." And he began to embarrass this woman. And he says, "You have this spirit and you have this spirit." And some say you have a <laughs> B-I-T-C-A spirit. <laughs> and then he went to, <laughs> he pretty was prophesying to her. <laughs> Sophia said, please explain. Yeah. And so I did a show based off of that horrible thing that he did to her. It went viral, not my show. This is the early days of the So Walter Jones show when I didn't have all the technology. I just had me and the whiteboard 
I look older. I had hair all on my face. <laughs> Those were the sad, sad days of the Sir the Show show. <laughs> so anyway, in that show, I mentioned the different spirits. Okay. Um, spirit of heaviness, spirit of bondage, spirit of a, a wounded spirit, an evil spirit, unclean spirit, spirit of slumber, spirit of deep sleep, spirit of your mind, spirit of antichrist, spirit of error, a hasty spirit, broken spirit, haughty spirit, spirit of disobedience, spirit of fear, uh, lying spirit. Okay, these are the spirits that I mentioned that were in the Bible, and I gave biblical proof behind them, okay? The spirit of dis disobedience, spirit of fear, the uh, spirit of whoredom, the spirit of divination, the spirit of sorcery, okay? Those are the, all the spirits that are in the Bible. If you come up with all, all kind of other spirits, then it's not in the scriptures, all right? Dana got it right, the spirit airlines. <laughs> Y'all got to shut this down. This thing's been an hour and 40 minutes. Where the clock keeper at? Hey, uh, there's, a, there's a job opening because the clock keeper must. She took off work and didn't tell me. All right, I did that show when? 2019, July the 15th, 2019. It's called Can You Have a B-I-T-C-H Spirit? Let me explain. <laughs> what was wrong with me? <laughs> What was wrong with me? I'm going to put that in my save. Save for later. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. Seducing spirit is one as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm putting that in the save. <laughs> That's pretty good. I, boy, you found that, huh? And no, Roger didn't find that one. <laughs> the, the clock keeper didn't find that one. I got, I got bunkers. <laughs> my moderators are hitting me up. They finding they finding all kind of stuff. <laughs> my moderators, I, I thank God for my moderators, cause they be finding stuff, man. Live and and full effect. Some of the moderators just don't want to be named, so that's why I was, I was saying, my moderators they don't want to be named. <laughs> I got some I got some silent moderators who are not, you don't see them, they're just silent. Uh, Carmen, just go to that website that's on the screen. Right there, just type that on your uh, on on Google. Type that in your where you type any website. Just type it as you see it. Patreon slash the Sir Walter Jones Show, and you're in. All right, I'm gonna go eat something, you all, and um, do something with my life. I'm gonna shoot some videos. I want to play the piano. Uh, all right, so I want I want to put something in the piano room. I heard this song by D uh, D Dion Warwick. Yeah. Dionne Warwick, the song called Alfie. What's it all about, Alfie? I heard it the other day, and I said, oh, my God, I've never played that before. I don't think I have. So I want to learn how to play that live in effect. The Piano Room is about me listening to the song and try to pick it out as you are watching me. All right, so if you're in the upper room, you're already in the piano room. But if you don't want to be in the upper room for the twelve dollars, for five little dollars, you can go into the piano room, and we unpack these songs. So, Alfie, let's do that next. That's gonna be fun because it sounded so beautiful. I was listening to on on L E A A L E X A. I can't say her name. <laughs> and uh, I said, "Play, play, Bert Bacharach," and Alfie came up, and I was listening to it. I almost started crying. <laughs> So I'm gonna put that on. I'm gonna put that on Patreon tomorrow. All right, in the piano room. Meet me over there. It's a romantic room for those of you <laughs> who think that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Other than that, for those of you who don't like me, have a bad day. <laughs> in my ur collar voice, uh, because I do want to talk to some of y'all who think some of y'all got upset me <laughs> because I did the I did the Cat Williams. <laughs> Somebody had the nerve to say, I like you better when, you, when you're when teaching the Bible. You shouldn't be doing entertainment. What does entertainment got to do with us? Come close. <laughs> Let me end this by saying, come a little closer. Listen to me. The problem 
He is. The problem is that I spoiled y'all. That's the problem. This here is my juke joint. And when the bunkers met me many years ago, I wasn't just doing Bible. I was playing the piano. And I wasn't doing all hymns. I was doing secular songs. And you never had a problem with it. When I talked about finances, which got nothing to do with the scriptures and stuff. Do, but it don't. I was talking about the stock market and, and all this stuff. You didn't have no problem with that, did you? No, you didn't. Number three, when I talked about people who died, that, what's the woman from the, the Golden Girls, so the last one who died? I just shown her, Mary Tyler Moore, and uh, people, not people, Bryson, James, James Ingram. All these people died. I played the piano and did shows on them. Y'all didn't have no problem with that, did you? No, you didn't. I talked about politics. I talked about voting. I talked about Black Lives Matter. Y'all had no problem with any of that, did you? No, you didn't. Betty White, thank you. No, you didn't. But when I did a show on Cat Williams the other day, y'all like, mm, I don't like your show. And if that one show <laughs> on Cat Williams will cause you to leave the So Walter Jones show and never come back, I spoiled you. I am a news source. Hence the name of my show is show. It's not called the So Walter Jones Bible Hour, is it? No, we are a variety show. <laughs> and I think this is one reason why they canceled Arsenio Hall, because he had, he had, he had the Muslim man on there to interview. And because he finally, Arsenio sounded like a journalist and not like a, like a monkey, like it was some kind of black exploitation when he sounded like a real journalist interviewing somebody as com controversial as Farrakhan. They got rid of him. Like y'all got rid of me because I talked about Cat Williams. Really? Something is wrong with y'all. <laughs> Something really wrong with y'all. Let me tell you, the customer is not always right. <laughs> The customer is not always right. You understand? So what did I do? I decided to do a Patreon so that you can get all aspects of So Walter Jones. In the piano room, y'all didn't y'all wouldn't fight with me. You didn't fight with me when I did my romance in the park all these years. Romance in the park is talking about love and sex and kissing and dating and all kind of stuff. Y'all didn't have a problem with that. Y'all watch it and say, oh, that's one of my favorite things that you do. The romance in the park. You had no, no problem with that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that. So Patreon now is, is Sir Walter Jones everything. It's my romance in the park. It's my playing secular songs on the piano. And it's my interviewing uh, Angie D. She, shot, she already shot her, 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 her footage. That'll be in the piano room. It's me talking about the stock market. Larry Jones have shot some stuff with me. Uh, Kimberly Graves have shot several videos with me. That would be going into the into what's called the finance room. And then there's me who talk about the Bible. So the Patreon is me in different rooms at different times. Everything I do on YouTube will now be on Patreon. But it will be one stop shop. You ain't got to go on YouTube looking for that. So you just go to Patreon and go right into the room and say, here's where he is. <laughs> I don't want to hear him talk. I don't want to hear him do nothing but play the piano and go into the piano. <laughs> the Lord gave me that because I said, God, I don't have enough money to pay for my tuition. I'm a, it's going to cost me 60 grand by the time I get done. And the Lord says, you've already built it. Moses, what's in your hand? <laughs> you got a community. They'll pay for your college. Just give them something. So what, what am I doing? I'm giving y'all something. It's called Patreon. <laughs> Go over there. All right? Because the customer ain't always right. They're going to tell you, I want this. And, and if, if, the, if the business or the restaurant change every time the customer wants something, then that restaurant will fold. You, I went to flat top bar and grill because of what they already had. <laughs> they already had it. And I went in there. I was lured into there because what they already had. And I ate it and I enjoyed it. 
I don't go around to the manager and say, hey, you need to change this. You need to switch that. And you need to switch that. Because I told that story to the bunkers before. I was Ubering. And I picked up the manager of Fat Top Barn Grill. Y'all have heard the story a million times. And I didn't know he was that manager until we were talking about food. He said, yeah, I managed it. I said, what? I said, man, y'all got rid of the plum sauce. That doesn't make any sense. The plum sauce is why I'm there. That's why I stayed there. Now y'all don't have the plum sauce. It doesn't make any sense. So I stopped going because he said, sir, if we, did every, if we made every change that the customer told us to make, <laughs> we would cease to exist. <laughs> he said, that whole thing about the customer's always right? Nah, bro. <laughs> message i learned a lesson right there all right y'all i think i've done enough i'm 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 hungry and i'm sleepy i didn't take a nap today god thank you for these people who are here thank you for the love that they've given me and i'm giving it back to them went a little long today but we did stop the video because pagani went a little over an hour and we would have been here for a couple more hours so god thank you for the revelation the illumination the understanding of what we saw there we spotted it right away because of the spirit of discernment and common sense you've given us thank you for giving it to us so we can understand it and these people in the comment section they wasn't fooled by that stuff help them dig deeper and deeper and deeper in the word of god so they will know how to unpack this stuff we love you god we give your name the praise in jesus name thank god amen now let's jam on the way out I see y'all later okay so while the Jones show Women That Men Desire by Sir Walter Jones is a women's guide to men. The authors endeavor to expose men fundamentally with his perspective on the types of women that men truly desire. 
He has meticulously penned a brilliant and controversial read, bold in its assertion that all women fall into one of four categories. Girl A, the side chick. Girl B, the mistress. Girl C, his soulmate. Or Girl D, his fatal attraction. And when a woman walks into a room, her category is showing. The Four Women That Men Desire is funny, informative, and enlightening. It is a quick read and a must-have for your library. Head over to Amazon.com for your copy. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?